This is gonna be a really fun video to make. We're going to Ithaca today. We're gonna see some waterfalls, gonna tour a farm. It's gonna be a good day. But before we go, gotta check on the cows. They're all so thirsty, it's so sad. You have a water pressure problem. It's not a water pressure problem, it's that the water stopped flowing. It wasn't checked until too late, so it's empty, and they're so thirsty that they are drinking at a faster rate than the water is coming in, and then they knock the hose out of the water and knock the water over. I've been trying to keep them away so that it will fill, but then they're cows, yeah. so. I don't know if we can like, can't walk bring, away from it. Bring other water down. That's an idea. You could just bring water in buckets. Like carry water in buckets. Do a wheelbarrow. Or a garden cart. Yeah, I, I think that would be great. Okay. Cool. Thank you for coming down. Before we can do, have to deal with the cow problems. Cows need water. Water in the cart. But you never know. Yeah. They drink like 25 gallons a day each or something. That's brilliant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now the cows will be wet. Adequately moisturized cows. We did it! The wind! There's a bat there. Yeah. Hey, sleepy friend. Sleepy bat friend. That's really cool. I know, look at it holding on. In the hole of the leaf. In the little, hole of the leaf? With its little <laughs> I don't know what this is called. It's okay. Oh my god, look at your face. <laughs> oh my god, look at your beautiful little face. Hi, are you awake? You lost that. I want to bet you, but I don't hand. think that's what it is. You look very lost and also very soft. Wow, look at this packed car. I've never seen this many people in this car. Really? Really? I can't car. remember the last time I was in a car with this many people. I saw you all. <laughs> I know we 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 waited to you. We said hi. We were like, this is weird. Cool, yeah, this there's is, fossils in there. It was like really, really weak. Like all of this little stuff. Was yeah, really weak. but this is but not. Then you get to this, and it's crazy strong, and it holds the whole thing together. Layers. Wow. And that was deposited by some major event. Uh huh. But probably. Look at those ferns. Oh, look at those ferns. It's gonna be a fern here. Yeah. There they are over there. So once we walk through the gate, we consider this the farm. We have lots of things planted in small quantities around our home. And I don't know if you saw, the kids are out foraging right now because it's a good time of year. There's blueberries, mulberries. So my background is in permaculture and holistic management. The idea of like having this edible forest garden basically where you walk around and just harvest things as you go. And that happened recently to me when I was out doing some yard work and weed whacking and stuff and I would stop and refresh myself with berries as I went and I thought, we're, fi like, we're finally getting there. We planted all this stuff and we've been waiting years and it's like finally happening. Holistic management, is very complementary 
to permaculture, it's really about decision making in the face of complexity when you're trying to make decisions that have ecological and financial and social and quality of life impacts. How do you balance all of those things? Like, How do you make decisions that will take into account what you want in terms of all of those things? We're going to actually walk through the paddock where the cows and sheep are. We've put in four ponds. Somebody was talking about drainage earlier. We put in this pond uh, so that it's uphill of the orchard with the idea that we could gravity irrigate the orchard if we needed to. We have lots of water running onto our property from neighbors. I don't ever want to look at water as a problem, but right now it's a problem. And so I want to manage it so that it's an asset and so create a pond to store it in the landscape. We now have a very modest flock of ducks and we've added some chickens so we have both chicken and duck eggs and we move them around in the orchard so that they don't damage the trees. We're actually using two strands of fencing for the flirt this year. We learned the hard way the last time they came through the orchard that when it really matters you need net fencing. We love bringing people to the farm and I have a passion for helping to connect people to farming and to where food comes from. And so we decided to start this farm stay. <laughs> oh, we're coming. We're coming. Oh, I was really thirsty. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no cutness. That's usually what I do. You want some yeah. of this? Mm. does this daily. <laughs> <laughs> It tastes so tropical. Holy shit, they just, they have like this... They look like the kind of cabbage that a Cabbage Patch doll would live inside of. Yeah. But purpler. That's so cool. Okay, time for close-ups. Look at those cabbages. You're so nice. Many slugs. So many slugs. Do you like Mary? Yes, please. Thanks. Three friends. Three friends. Flowers. Paw paw That's friends. Like massive what a nice so kind of friend. Insect ecosystem around the large animals pooping and dying around the pawpaw groves and pollinated pawpaw groves. They're all, they're all dumpster pollinated. That's amazing. Pawpaws are like the trees beloved by Dumpra. He planted his holy tree. Yeah, Dumpra. A patron god of the dumpster. <laughs> Okay, the video's done. It's time for the thing. What am I saying? Should I turn? Should I face you? We're, we're, we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. If you want to help us make more videos like this one, you can support us on Patreon. There's a link in the description. Yay! <laughs>